Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. The best thing since animated bread this week on Boss Battle. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 115, a show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F. J. Town, but before we get to this chewy nougat and this Snickers bars of a podcast, let's find out what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What did you achieve? I played all of the games. All of the games? Also, yeah. I just wanted to say chewy nougat. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's play it, see. Summerco, Diamond Digger Saga, uh, Trivia Crack, Boulder Skate, Duck Dynasty, Dope Wars, Diner Dash, Supercar, Thomas Was Alone, and Destiny. How, how, how was Duck Dynasty? I saw you do a review of it for the site. It's fun. Read the review. Really? Yeah. Did they force you to drink tea at any point? No. Okay. Force you to grow a beard? That's, that's the whole goal of the game. Oh, cool. All right, Sorg, what did you achieve this week? Oh, it was all about the mobile this week for me since I was uh, on the run. Uh, Transformers Angry Birds is awesome. I want to try to put a, a, get a video review up for that here in the coming days. Uh, Crazy Taxi because it was Holly, Hol Hollywood Hulk Hogan week. And I think it's like Scary Halloween Hulk Hogan week now. Um, oh, okay. I also finally jumped into the um, the uh, Assassin's, Creed, Assassin's Creed Pirates game. Not half bad. Um, I also dived into, uh, because it's been so long, uh, Plants vs. Zombies 2. A lot has changed there. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I have yet to play that yet. I haven't, I haven't played right. that yet. Uh, you, were you big, big into the first one? Uh, somewhat. Yeah, it was, it's, um, I mean, it got more freemium, you know? Um, so there's that. And, and that's the thing. Every game, I, every game I'm playing is freemium right now, too. Uh, hmm. except for every once in a while when I pull up Ghost Simulator. Oh, and, uh, and still Supercard, of course. Mm -hmm. That's premium. Yeah. I'm going to check my King of the Ring while you guys are going. All right. Joining us once again, Lunchbox, what did you achieve this week? Uh, this week I killed hundreds, possibly thousands of orcs. I had a few dozen come back to life on me, which is infuriating and a lot of fun. And uh, I'll tell you more about that later. All right. And joining us, uh, our special guest this week is Mad Mike from the uh, Rambling Movie Minute. Uh, what did you achieve this week, Mike? Uh, well, I went on a quest as Ganondorf to try and reclaim the Triforce in Hyrule Warriors. I'm kicking some butt as Super Saiyan Gohan in Smash Brothers. And I got a new Ultra Rare Roman Reigns. I got Hugo in Tapped Out. And I played some Ghostbusters Fruit Ninja, which is way different than the last time I played it. All right. And uh, from the chat, Buddy Landell played. Uh, he he played Destiny. And he beat the uh, Vault of Glass. He said no big deal. Um, Wheels played uh, WWE 2K14 and Left for Dead. Brother Sorg played a lot of recent of lot of recent Tomb Raider, which was amazing and a huge improvement over the earlier titles. And he also restarted The Walking Dead uh, to get to the second season, which I have yet to do yet. I have to go back and finish it. Uh, Alex Cars played Human Tetris again. Human Pong, a.k.a. Table Tennis. Uh, that's a different sport. This is turning into a sports podcast. Uh, and he uh, wasn't this week, but a little uh, while ago he got uh, to the finals of a Super Smash Bros. 3DS tournament. Uh, and his friends were using Kirby. And Brother Sorg also added that he recently played Assassin's Creed 3, Tyranny of King Washington, DLC. Uh, he said he might, it might have been uh, better than the original campaign. Yes. And I uh, played a lot of Simpsons Tapped Out and uh, Family Guy. And I backed my uh, Elgato back up, uh, therefore creating havoc with my systems. Uh, both the PS3 and the Xbox 360, in preparation for our Extra Life uh, Gameathon, which is this weekend, uh, you can go to uh, bit.ly slash. Uh, where is it? <laughs> extra, or life you, or extra Life. Extra Life, yeah. Or you can go to uh, insertcoinbegin.com, and there's a, yeah. there's a big banner right over there on the side that you can click to go straight to the page bit.ly slash extra life insert coin. That's what it is. Okay. 
All right. Uh, joining us this week is Mad Mike. Uh, Ma Mike uh, lives in New York, as a lot of you know. Um, and he went to uh, New York City Comic Con and played some of the games they had there and just saw di the different sites uh, related to video games. Uh, Mike, what'd you, what? tell us about a bit about Comic Con and what did you play? Uh, well, one of the first things I noticed about Comic Con, which is one of the things I'm usually really excited about, is the Nintendo booth. And the, and the um, they didn't have one this year. Ah. Oh. Which I was really kind of shocked at. In fact, the they're whole con... Go, they're starting to go away from like having booths at events. Yeah, I know, but I, I figure with Smash Brothers just coming out, with them wanting to promote Smash Brothers for the Wii U, I figured I'd get a chance to try that out. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, I was denied that opportunity. But uh, they had a Capcom booth out. I got a giant Mega Man buster. Nice. The, uh, Mega Man anniversary. It was fun. Uh, they had the new Dragon Ball Z game out there, so I was able to try that a little bit. Uh, they had a lot of uh, first-person shooters, though, which I'm not too huge on, so I didn't really try any of those out. They had, a, uh, I believe, a Resident Evil game that they wanted to coming out, and it looked like a lot of fun just based on the, uh, the, de like the demos I was watching people play. And they had um, a big Just Dance setup at the, uh, right near the Twitch booth there, and they were doing a lot of Just Dance and... Uh, a lot of like dancing, moving games, Cause, stuff like that. Because that screams Comic Con. <laughs> well, I mean, they they have a lot of nerdy like songs that are played yeah. there. So kind of interesting. But the big thing I did get to do with relation to video games was I got to play Lego Batman Three, and go to the Lego Batman Three panel. Nice. And oh my dear lord, I need this game in my life immediately. <laughs> so you you actually saw the big Kevin Smith news before we did, didn't you? Yes, I did. Um, I saw the Kevin Smith news, and uh, they had promoted that Stephen Amell, the star of Arrow, was going to be at the panel. <laughs> so um, we went there, and one of the guys from IGN was hosting the panel. Uh, really good guy. They were talking about a lot of the stuff that's coming out. They talked about Daffy Duck as uh, the green loon turn coming to Lego Batman. They talked oh, about... What was that pun? <laughs> oh, I... That one, that one's even a bit too much for me. That one's even a bit too much for me. But um, they had, they talked about Conan O'Brien being the, in the game. Oh, they did talk about Conan. Oh yeah, uh, they, they talked announced that there. Yeah, they they announced that one there. They announced um, comic book creators Jeff Johns and Jim Lee being in there. And, oh wow! And they got to create what their own powers were. So I thought that was really funny. Jeff Johns, who was like, I want a Green Lantern ring, I want Captain Cold's gun, and I want to be able to fly. <laughs> so, so that was just awesome what, on a lot of What did Jim Lee take to be able um, to sketch everybody, turn everybody into a black and white pencil sketch? <laughs> uh, he does have a pencil that he throws at people. Nice. Yeah. Which, so, he, if, if, you're not, if you're not familiar with comics, Lunchbox can back me up. Jim Lee is one of the best artists in comics of I all have. time. I have two uh, pieces of comic artwork on my wall, and they are both uh, from him. Nice. And um, so they kept teasing, uh, talking about the Green Arrow and everything. And uh, while, like, because they had announced that uh, Stephen Mel was going to be there, so during a lull in the conversation, I actually stood up and screamed, "You have failed this panel!" <laughs> right before they introduced the Green Arrow footage. So they showed a whole bunch of stuff uh, from. Uh, the Arrow character as seen on a TV show, and he came out and um, asked who was the one who screamed, you have failed this panel. And everyone turned and pointed to me, and then I got to meet Larry, who's a nice guy. <laughs> but um, they announced a whole bunch of DLC packs afterwards. They have uh, a 75 Years of Batman DLC coming out, which has the uh, old school black, like uh, the Batman from the serials with the super long ears, <laughs> which really excited about, and they announced an Arrow DLC pack, which has almost everyone from Season 1. It has uh, Malcolm Merlin, it has Slade, it has um, Black Canary, it has Laurel, Diggle. Basically, any character you like on Arrow is going to be in this game. Cool. So that immediately made me want to buy it more. They'll probably announce a, a Flash pack now that that show's doing so well, too. <laughs> Yeah, potentially, uh, potentially, because I mean, they said uh, once they got uh, Amel to do the voice, because they were talking about how he kind of is the modern voice of the Green Arrow. Like we mm -hmm. have Kevin Conroy for Batman, or you know what have you, but there was never a voice for the Arrow. So it was kind of cool to see him really, really excited about it. And uh, the gameplay 
they they took it up a, a few notches because uh, they have the a, a chain a circle wheel for um, each individual suit, and there's a whole bunch of different characters that have different suits now. Uh, Cyborg's got a whole bunch of them. Joker's got a whole bunch of them. Luther has a whole bunch of them. So it's kind of a cool storyline because it's the JLA teaming up with the Legion of Doom to battle Brainiac, <laughs> and it it looks way bigger than the level than the Lego Marvel superheroes. Like just the amount of characters alone, they said they have upwards of 150 characters. Oh wow! Yeah. How and many some, How many did the Marvel game have? I think the Marvel had about 90. 90, okay. Something like that. So it's but, a lot more than the Marvel game, then. Oh, yeah, and this goes to, like, different worlds, and you can world hop, and <laughs> you can bring... You can have, like, the Bat- the Batmobile drive around on Oa, which is <laughs> really kind of fun. It there looked, were 155 characters in Lego Marvel. Wow. Okay, maybe it was more than that than they said so for ba- the... Uh, basically Lego about Marvel. the same. But it was such an expansive roster. Like, they, ha- they have Bat-Cow that's going to be in it, like they have a lot of different animals. There's some characters that just don't need to be in there. <laughs> like, well, um, uh, what was the one I saw that uh, De- Detective Duck, not Detective Duck, um, Detective Detective Chimp is going to be in there. Okay. I'm not exactly sure why. I think he assaults people with a banana. Jeez. Okay. See the difference between Lego Batman three having that many characters and. Lego Batman or Lego Marvel mm-hmm. is that the ones in Lego Marvel were for the most part characters actually for all the part were characters in the Marvel universe, not just animals dressed up as bats and uh, uh, Officer Champo. Well, Bat Cow is in the DC universe. Hope you He's don't a- get Bat Cow disease. And uh, Lego Batman three has 150 characters. Okay. All right. Um, anything else from Comic Con that you saw that was that caught your interest in video game launch? Uh, not that much, actually. There's usually a bigger video game presence there, and I was kind of surprised that uh, it focused a lot on comics. Well, it's kind of good that it is focusing back on comics. That you know, that's what that's what it's all about, really. Um, yeah. San Diego has become more about the movies and video games, anyways, and that's what we have E3 for. So, um, but it's still cool that there is some presence at New York City Comic Con. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks, Mike, no for problem. that information. And like I said earlier in the show, um, we are doing a 24-hour gameathon this weekend. You can watch us on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, Sorg has been nice enough to donate the <laughs> uh, chat room and live streaming ability for us this year. Um, and uh, we would like you to go, if you can, and donate to uh, our uh, Extra Life page. Um, all of us, uh, Riz, Cat, Julie. Uh, myself and Sorg are all playing. Uh, you can donate an- to either any one of us. So um, again, that link is bit.ly slash extra life insert coin. Or you could go to insert coin to be or insert coin to begin dot com and uh, pick, uh, click on one of the banners and it'll take you right to the site. All right, Chachi, you ready to take us around the net? Sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for this week's edition of Video Game Theme Things from Around the Internet. Let's uh, start with the runners-up as per usual. Uh, Dragalisco at DeviantArt has reimagined what Pokemon look like. And they are no longer cute and cuddly little animals. Oh, no. Um... I would be really, really afraid of these things. Like, <laughs> they're completely badass looking and not so friendly. Well, they're supposed to be pocket monsters. <laughs> they don't yeah. have really monster like qualities, really. Well, the thing is, uh, if you're pocket sized. Yeah, that kind of takes some. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Wait, um, how, is so Gar- how is Gyarados pocket sized? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I guess because he can fit in that little pokeball, right? Which could um, fit in your pocket. So yeah, right. I guess so. But uh, you can go over to insertcoinbegin.com and check out the post for the link to that. Uh, the the other runner up is a Mashable article, which I apologize for because I don't really link to Mashable for anything. 
Um, but uh, it's six games made in Microsoft Excel that you can download and play. Um, 2048. Uh, Candy Candy Number Crunch Saga, which is essentially a uh, like a, a stock game based on King. Hmm. Uh, Monopoly, a 3D maze game, and uh, I don't know what this one is, but it is called uh, Arenaism. But it, it's like a it looks like a dungeon crawler. Um, all inside Excel. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then a uh, a word game that's called Writer's Block that is a combination between Scrabble and uh, Battleship. That's a two player game. So basically, so, an Excel, Excel, Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> no, a little bit more than that. All of these, with the exception of the Candy Crush one, mm-hmm. is uh, way more than just an Excel spreadsheet. Oh wow. Like the stuff that goes into it are it is is quite incredible. Hmm. Um, next and into the actual uh, nougat of this candy pot of this candy post. <laughs> that's why that's why we won the candy crush this week, right? <laughs> right. Um, uh, one of my favorite YouTube series, uh, Game Theorist, um, finished their Watch Dogs uh, death series. Um, and if you missed it the first time I linked it, essentially what they're doing is going through and seeing how feasible it is to actually accomplish most of the stuff that you, that you can do in Watch Dogs. Um, in the first one, they pointed out that it's extremely easy to do if you have the knowledge and technology. Um, and even the technology isn't that far-fetched. So uh, it is actually possibly possible to do. In the second part, they uh, analyze whether or not it's possible to cause someone's death uh, by hacking, and once again, they figured out that um, it's actually been accomplished already. Hmm. Uh, it, let me restate. Let me let me state that no one actually died, but they've proven that within 50 feet, you can hack someone's uh, pacemaker or um, insulin pump to so the work. The world of watchdogs could actually happen then. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it's extremely feasible if you have the skills, um, but it can't be done. Uh, next up, someone created a working iPhone in Minecraft. Uh, it, it doesn't make calls, but you can open apps and play games on the iPhone itself, <laughs> uh, complete with slide to unlock, functioning calendar, and clock. Um, I wouldn't really watch this entire video as it's just a rundown of the phone, unless you're a uh, brother of the show, Matt. Um, it's 13 minutes long. Jump through, take a look if you want. Did I have a question, a legitimate question. Yeah. Did they create a Minecraft app on the phone? I don't think so. Um, I didn't see they one. Should've. They should have been just like, just opened the world of Minecraft back up. Yeah. Um... That would be funny as hell. Uh, but the, the stuff that they do in Minecraft is just mind-blowing. Um, and apparently I, I said that the Mashable article was a runner-up, and actually that was the last one in the, the story. Um, but the other runner-up is a highlight video of video game accomplishments from this week. And someone accomplished the perfect Falcon Punch in a uh, Smash Brothers tournament in Vegas this past week. Uh, what happened, and it's, uh, I believe it's number two or three in the actual video. Um, but what happened was he was about ready to fall off the cliff, uh, did his double jump to get lined up with the cliff, and his opponent was just waiting for him to die, wasn't really paying attention. His opponent got falcon punched, died instantly, and then decided that there was nothing he could do to top that and just quit. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so it, it's really entertaining. So you go ahead and check that out as well. You and shouldn't. that is all I have for you this week on video game theme things from around the internet. Net, net, net. All right. Thanks, Chachi.
All right. Uh, now it's time for th some things we should ma be made aware of. Um, first up, some news bits. Uh, do you guys remember Goat Simulator and how wacky that was? Mm -hmm. Do um, I? I'm still playing it on the phone. Well, get ready because Boston Studios have created maybe the ultimate simulator. A slice of bread. You, oh, play, man. you play as a slice of bread. Is this available on mobile? Um, it is available, I think, just in Steam right now. Oh. What's the game called, Bobby? It is called... Wait a minute. It is called Bread Simulator, I think. Uh, uh, is it I Am Bread? I Am Bread, yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, basically, uh, the, um, the beautiful the, the the official description of the game is the beautiful story of a slice of bread's epic and emotional journey as it embarks upon a quest to become toasted. <laughs> wow! So it's, wait, its whole I, purpose I mean, is to bake itself. It, yeah, basically get get a tan or kill itself, and then get wow. eaten. So. Well, um, let me just point out that just because we see it as the bread dying, mm -hmm. for all we know, the only reason bread exists is to get toasted. So, or, or it could be eaten. it could be a failure in the bread community <laughs> if they get used for anything other than toast. You ain't toast. You ain't nothing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like. Uh, parents have a have a little beautiful baby boy piece of bread, and they're like, "Man, when our little boy grows up, he's gonna get toasted, and we're gonna be so proud." And run. then he ends up being a sandwich, and they're like, "Fuck that kid." I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna wrap up this baguette in a blanket and rock it to sleep. Right. <laughs> they must feel really bad for all of the ends of a loaf because oh, you know, no, one ever, no one ever toasts those. <laughs> they, I, think, I, I think in bread society. That's I think actually, in bread society, if you have a an end piece as a child, you just know that kid is doomed for failure. <laughs> <laughs> oh do, you my. Think, do you think once you actually complete the game and you insert yourself into a toaster, they got the guy from World Combat to come in and go, Toasty! Mm, maybe. Maybe. Um, probably, probably not. not. That, that <laughs> says lawsuit. <laughs> All right. Um, but each each corner of the bread moves independently. That's how it moves. Um, and uh, condiments can change your abilities of your bread. So if you add like maybe mustard or or butter or ketchup, I don't know why you wouldn't put ketchup on bread. But they do different things to the bread. So wait, uh, hold on, hold on, time out, time out. Maybe jam. And so you're heading to the toaster. <laughs> But you're going to put condiments on the bread pre-toasting? Oh, maybe it's a kamikaze mission, then they're trying to ruin the toaster. I was going to say, that, that screams doom for the toaster. I need to rethink this whole bread strategy thing. <laughs> All right. Maybe uh, they're trying to... Maybe the whole the whole goal of toast is to... Or bread is to break the toaster. Oh, maybe. Maybe that's why they leave so many crumbs in there. Oh, like, like we leave the crumbs to try and lodge in the gears of the toaster, then they realize it's just heating coils, and that's. I am writing some bread fanfic. <laughs> that's it. It's better. It's better than the murderous pop tart commercials that are out. Like everybody's trying to murder pop tarts. Adventures mm -hmm. of bread. Maybe right. toast is trying to take revenge for the pop tarts. Maybe, maybe. All right, our next story, uh, guys. There's a new Doctor Who game out. Um, but it's only available in the UK, oh. and it's going. It teaches kids from six to twelve how to code, which is kind of cool. Um, it's it's a new game starring Peter Capaldi and a friendly Dalek, um, and it's only available in the United Kingdom, so we can't play it. But uh, it's part of uh, BBC's Di uh, Make It Digital initiative, um, and it comes out October twenty second, which is tomorrow. Um, but I, I think it's kind of cool that they're teaching kids how to code um, at such a young age. They can pick it up and just run with it, you know? I have a problem with this game. Okay. Um, friendly Dalek. Yeah that's, that, my yeah, that's true. Well, is it is it the friend? Is it Rusty, the one from this season? Uh, maybe. It could be. 
I wasn't even okay with Rusty. So <laughs> <laughs> you would make a good Dalek. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not okay with a friendly Dalek. Um, it's that, that just that just screams backstab. <laughs> It's it's also written. The game is also written by uh, series writer Phil Ford, so that's kind of cool too. That's awesome. All right, and our final news bit story: uh, Rob Riggle is the star of the new movie Dead Rising Watchtower. Um, if you're not familiar with Rob Rob Riggle's work, work he uh, was a uh, former. <laughs> his name is hard to pronounce. Um, but he he was on SNL. He was on uh, the Daily Show work. for a while. Uh, he he was actually in the military for a long time. Uh, he was a, he's a retired U.S. Marine. Um, I think this is a good fit for Dead Rising. Um, the only thing is the movie isn't actually going to come out in theaters. It's going to be available on Crackle, uh, which is an app on your Xbox and stuff like that. But also in the cast of the movie, very interestingly enough, uh, Epic Mealtime host Harley Mornstein and Ale- Alex. Uh, Ponovic, are, they're going to play uh, biker gang members. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, do you guys think this is a good fit for, for uh, Frank West? Are you familiar with Frank West from uh, Dead Rising? Nope. Uh, well, was, was, he, was he in the first Dead Rising or was yeah, he in he was, he was the, in the first? He was the photographer in the first Dead Rising that was set in the mall. Wow. Which was enough was a very difficult game to play. <laughs> it was a very difficult game. I think he's good for it. Uh-huh. Those games are such a good blend of action and gore and comedy and horror and all that stuff. And I think I think Rob Riggle can pull it off. I agree. I think he's yep. going to be a good choice. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit on the Movie Minute, too. And I think Rob Riggle's got the right amount of badassery and humor to be able to pull off that character. He's like, he's like the good balance. <laughs> Um, it, it's also uh, the movie is written by Tim Carter, um, the same guy who brought us uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy, and he also was a writer on Sleeping Dogs, uh, which Lunchbox, I know you played that game, and That's Chachi too, right? What? Uh, did you play Sleepy, Sleeping Dogs? No. Oh, Actually, I, I played a little bit after it came okay, out. Okay, Stork played. Yeah, I like that. Sleeping one. Dogs, a lot of fun. It's mm-hmm. a good game. Uh, one of my one of my uh, underrated Xbox games of, of all time, I'd say. Um, I hope they actually make a sequel for uh, the Xbox One or or PlayStation Four. <laughs> um, and uh, it, like I said, it's going to debut on Crackle, uh, which is Sony's streaming video service, which is available on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. All right, um, guys, uh, I, I think I'm going to depress Chachi here a little bit. Wait, um, hold on one second before you okay. piss me off. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna piss you off. I said okay. I was gonna make you depressed. Before you, before you uh, completely kill my mood, I want to bring up quickly that uh, season three of Video Game High School started releasing last week on oh, okay. YouTube. Cool. Um, the second episode was released today. They're about forty minutes long, and if you've ever seen any of Video Game High School, it's definitely worth the watch because it's even better than the first two seasons. Didn't they say this was like the final season? Or yeah, something? I was just getting ready to say, okay. and this is the final season of Video Game High School. Hmm. So interesting. They're letting the kids graduate. <laughs> well, technically, I think they'd have. I don't know. I don't know how video game high school works. I don't yeah. know if they go four years or three years or. <laughs> it's. I don't know how long they've been there. It's accelerated learning. Yes, I don't know how long they've been there. I just want somebody to look over and go, "Is that Luke Perry? He's still in high school." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right, Chachi. Now I'm going to depress you. The head of Microsoft or of, of Ubisoft Studio, Jade Raymond, has left the company after ten years. I don't care. Uh, she, <laughs> okay. Uh, she's best known for her work on Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell, and Watch Dogs. Um, they said that Alexander Perizo, uh, probably a French name, uh, since they are up in Montreal, uh, they will take uh, her lead ro- her lead role as uh, Ubisoft Toronto, um, which she founded uh, and has managed since two thousand nine. Um, but she's leaving to pursue other opportunities and ambitions. Um, not sure what those are yet, but uh, I wish her well because she did a bang up job at Ubisoft. It's it's gone from almost a nothing company to like one of the most popular game companies and of our of this generation. You guys uh, have any the, the only the only reason I said I don't care mm-hmm. is because the Assassin's Creed arc is already figured out. Oh yeah, yeah. So. 
That's I'm sure what she, I cared about. I'm sure she had a lot to do with that, though. Right. But it's already figured out. So I'm not going to miss out on anything. Mm-hmm. And maybe she'll she'll move to another company and create another Assassin's Creed, like not Assassin's Creed, but like another big franchise like that. Hobo Bindles. <laughs> Hobo Bindles. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lunchbox. I think you played a game that you mentioned earlier, and and uh, what you achieved this week. Uh, you want to talk to us a little bit about Shadows of Mordor? That's true. Uh, I started playing, uh, like Bobby just said, Shadows of Mordor, and uh, it's so good that. Uh, the first day I spent playing it, I sent Bobby a message and said, hey, I need to be on Boss Battle <laughs> because I need to tell everyone how amazing this game is. It's uh, it's I, The last time I was um, as kind of enamored with a game as I am with this was uh, Assassin's Creed 4. Um, and it's when I say enamored, I mean like I wake up early and think about playing it before I go to work. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm excited to come home and play this game. Oh, when 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 Call of Duty first came out, when we first started playing it, I had dreams that like predator drones were striking me, and I would I would hear them in my sleep and be like ah, <laughs> and wake up. It was like almost like well, no, not really. Yeah, it's it's amazing this game. It's um. So the the point of the game is you're a ranger who is possessed by the spirit of an elf or something along those lines. It's not really that important. Uh, the point is, it's kind of like an open world game and you run around killing orcs, right? Um, and the elf spirit gives you magic powers. But the the catch is the orcs, there's a hierarchy to the orcs. Mm-hmm. There's, um, there's captains and then there's bodyguards and then there's war chiefs. And that power balance is always shifting. Like if an orc kills you, they get a promotion. If a random grunt orc that doesn't have any rank kills you, they get promoted to captain. Oh, wow. And their boss gets promoted and on down the line. It's it's really that's what makes the game really, really interesting. As far as the actual gameplay, it's um the combat is kind of uh Batman the Arkham mm-hmm. uh Arkham Asylum and Arkham City games. Um and uh all the way down to like the counter button that pops up above the enemies' heads. And uh, as far as exploring the world, it's kind of like Assassin's Creed. Um, but uh, it's so addicting and really hard. And you die a lot, which means your orc enemies um, get stronger and stronger and they taunt you. Like, say you are you have a fight with a captain and you're losing and you run away. The next time you see him, he'll make fun of you for running away the last time you saw him. <laughs> nice. It's, uh, the other nice thing is... Um, so there's this one orc that killed me, some random grunt, and he got promoted to captain. Next time I saw him, I killed him. I killed him from a distance, shot him in the eye with an arrow, and he fell into a fire. He survived that, came back with a big metal plate over the side of his head, oh, awesome. and said, uh, you can't kill me the same way twice, and he was invulnerable to ranged attacks, and I had to go in and fight him like one-on-one. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's this some like, high-tech stuff right there. It is a lot of fun. It is crazy, and these, these orcs—they just—they make—they taunt you constantly, and they get under your skin. And, and um, I was playing when we were when we were watching Raw last night. Mm-hmm. I was playing the game, and it, yeah, I was gonna mention that. This you will curse a lot when you play this game, <laughs> because they're not just random enemies. They have personalities, and they make you hate them. <laughs> so I, I absolutely absolutely recommend. Um, Going and picking up, picking up. Uh, I'm playing it on PC. I, I think it's out for uh, PS4 and Xbox One, and then yeah. there's a PS3 and 360 launch. I think uh, later this month or next month. I wonder if the uh, Xbox 360 one's going to be in uh, PS3 or going to be as in depth. Uh, I think so. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, it's essentially it's like the same game. It's just like textures and graphics yeah. and everything like that. Because that. That is the hook of the game, is the, the hierarchy and the, the way that orcs come back and everything like that. Awesome. Let's yeah. check that out. It's a lot of fun. I'm probably going to start playing it when we wrap on the show. <laughs> and our, on our final story here, um, Gabe Newell received a death threat this week. Um, a, a, and from, from one of the developers on Steam, uh, a guy who developed uh, Paranautical Activity... His name is Mike Malbeck. Uh, he lets let loose a series of vitriolic tweets 
um, basically disparaging Valve and saying they're incompetent, among other things. Um, he since deleted the tweets, and he he his the tweet that got him in trouble read, "I am going to kill Gabe Newell. He is going to die." Okay. Um, not only did Valve pull the plug on uh, uh, pull the game from Steam, they also contacted uh, Malbec and uh, terminated his relationship as a developer, and they also took away his uh, a, an admin account at Steam or for Steam. Um, he uh, then tried to get Valve to reconsider his decision, um, and they declined, of course. Um, but the game is a fast person, uh, a face, a fast-paced first-person shooter, and it's uh, still available through other d digital distribution means. Uh, he hasn't, <laughs> basically, he hasn't uh, threatened to kill anybody on those, uh, which is Desora and Humble Store. Um, well, see, the thing is, you can try to download those games that came from other sources, but chances are you're not going to. Because he, what's that? Are we getting attacked by jets? Yes. Um, my house was being bombed. I oh bombed. no! Um, I'm having flashbacks to the water. Um, water. Um, no, I, I, it, no one's going to download this game anymore. Yeah. Because I, even I when he was it. sending the tweets out, he said that he got like six sales on other other platforms. Mm -hmm. Those are probably going to be the only six sales he gets on the game. And 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 the 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 thing that like set him off was that they he, he said the game was finished and they had on there that it was still in early testing. Right. And that that's he said it's gonna it was going to take away a lot of his sales, which you don't you don't like go on a tirade about that. You know, that can be fixed. Yeah. Um do you, but this leads to our final battle question. Um do you think Steam did the right thing by taking his or do you think Valve did the, the right thing or did they overreact? Uh, if you threaten to kill someone on the internet, I'm pretty sure you don't want that person working yeah, for you anymore. Exactly. <laughs> That's uh, I, I'm pretty sure they probably could have gone a, a step further, like maybe getting the authorities involved. Mm -hmm. Because oh, well, that could be terroristic to... threats. Yeah, right, exactly. That, yeah, a death threat is a death threat. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I don't like Phil Fish. Mm -hmm. I've never once threatened to kill him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't like that guy. That guy is an asshole, but that's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm not threatening to do any physical harm to him. I don't even want to find him. I don't care where he is. I just want it to be known that I don't like the guy. And that's where you need to draw the line. <laughs> it's okay to say, you know what? This DJ Lunchbox guy is kind of a dick. I don't like him. <laughs> it's not okay to say... Chelsea just turned into an orc. Right. <laughs> it's not okay to say uh, blah, 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 skull bang him. <laughs> skull bang. Skull <laughs> bang. So, I mean, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, there's a line, and we're seeing way too much of this in a community that should be a lot friendlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, have, we know, learned, I, have, we, have we learned nothing from Gamergate? Well, no, I mean, and that's and that's the thing. Um, for the most part, we spent a lot of time getting picked on as kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Why, why the hell are we picking on each other? Because mm -hmm. we got because we got a lot of uh, got picked on a lot as kids. So now we're all jumpy and we're all trigger happy. Vent up frustrations. Yeah. Vent up, vented up frustrations. I guess it would be. No, all right, right. Uh, pent up. Pent up. <laughs> pent up. Yeah. Um, I think I think that um, I, everybody in this situation did the best with with a bad situation essentially because the guy came out and he he stepped down from his company he sold the rest to his partner he said I'm yeah. too temperamental to be um, in this uh, this uh, business and I don't want my bad reputation to affect the people in the company that mm -hmm. I care about. Yeah, I was going to just mention that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, I I don't think they overreacted at all. I think, w well done, Valve. <laughs> when when you attack the master of the company, you get messed with. 
<laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, we want to th- uh, <laughs> thank our special guest, Mad Mike, at MadMike4883 on Twitter. Uh, you can check him out on the Rambling Movie Minute and on our very own Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, also, the, the Rambling Ma- Minute, Movie Minute is also on the Sertertron Media as well. Um, and you can follow us on at InsertCoinTV. Uh, you can visit us on InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, new articles going up daily. And you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on Live.SorgatronMedia.com. For at Sorgatron, at Chachi Says, at DJ Lunchbox, I'm at Bobby FJ Town. Game over, everybody. All righty. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.